know what a GMO stands for? It stands for like gross mutilated, not modified. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought. Well, it stands for genetically modified organism, such as these. You heard right. There aren't any correlation between cancer and consuming GMO foods. In fact, GMO foods are nothing new. Humans have been using a process called selective breeding for a millennia. According to a 2015 study conducted by Dr. Navadita Chatterjee, Lipid Donovani, a type of bacteria that's been genetically engineered to fight cancer cells, this GMO technology is currently undergoing more trials and could be used as a more affordable treatment in the future. All right, so if I wanted to, I could just chill out in the sun all day, and if I get cancer, I can just GMO and get cured? Well, the treatment hasn't been commercial yet, and I wouldn't recommend carelessly laying out and trying to get that gorgeous red tan. Oh, all right, so maybe I was wrong about GMOs. But wait, wait, wait. Don't GMOs force farmers to, like, use more pesticides? I mean, pesticides kill people. I don't want to die. No, Thomas. GMOs are actually a solution to limiting pesticides used in the farming industry. According to Bill Gates, his research has proven that GMO crops produce their own bacteria that kill pests, such as insects. Wait, wait. W wouldn't those bacteria hurt me also? Like, I, I really don't want to have weird insect-killing bacteria in my diet, so... No, those bacteria only affect pests and leave everything else unharmed. So, they aren't going to kill me, right? It's just the pests die, right? Well, Thomas, I guess that depends on whether or not you deem yourself as a pest. Oh, come on. Like, I think I'm the GMO pest. <sighs> He's only poking fun at you, Thomas. You're only a pest sometimes. On that note, let's move on to some more exciting developments in GMO technology. All right, let's talk bananas. This banana, in my head, has been genetically engineered as an edible vaccine. So, like, instead of getting a shot, I can just eat a banana? You got it! But Dang. aren't there different dosages for different people? Like, how can we be sure that banana vaccines are safe? Both valid questions. At this stage, scientists are still working on the logistics of such a profound medical advancement. With proper storage and dosage can be implemented into these banana vaccines, it can be available for public consumption in the near future. Yeah, I'm kind of kind of hungry. Can I eat that banana, man? I wouldn't recommend it. It's in my. It's been in my shirt for quite a while now. That's that's a shame. Well, I never know when I'll have to ruin something, so I carry a variety of them in my shirt. Is there anything else in there? Seth, let's uh, move him in there. Come on out, little guy. <laughs> there you go. Be wow, free. a bunny. <sighs> hey, buddy. You've got to be kidding me. Please tell me he hasn't been there in long as we have. Oh no, I just bought this little guy off of Amazon and unboxed him this morning. May I ask why? Yo, can I hold him, please? Alright, yeah, here All we right. go. Alright, cool. You better hope that bunny's not rabid. Don't worry. I think Amazon kept him updated on his vaccine. But most importantly, watch what he can do! What can he do? <laughs> Wait, hold on. What is this dude doing? Oh! Wow, it glows in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, that certainly can't be healthy. Well, that's the very point. I brought this little guy to show you that the alternate approach scientists are taking in this GMO world. There is this great debate on whether humans are overstepping their boundaries by inserting jellyfish genes into bunnies, causing them to glow in the dark. Although it doesn't really hurt the animal, it really makes people question the ethics of GMO science. No kidding. I understand that people want to be entertained, but this is just cruel. Here, Thomas, let me hold the bunny. That's not the only strange thing that humans are doing with GMO technology. In recent years, crops such as golden rice have been developed to feed the malnourished. Golden rice is just like normal rice, but it's genetically modified to increase its nutritional value. This is an extremely important crop and is a staple in many people's diets around the world. It's easy to grow and can produce in excess. Rice? Four days. Wow, so I could just eat golden rice? No way. You have to eat something other than rice to live. The truth is, golden rice is an excellent source of nutrition, but you shouldn't make it the only part of your diet. Yeah. Where the heck did we teleport to this time? 
This is a farm that specializes in GMO crops. Are we doing another lecture? <laughs> yup. And all at the same time, GMOs aren't exactly perfect. Like every great thing in the world, it has some flaws. Yeah. In the near future, there may never be more any more natural grown crops. I'm listening. Because of the natural process of cross pollination, the bees may come across, you know, one of these unnatural plants or crops and go on to spread their seed. These artificial plants are better off better fit to survive opposed to its natural counterpart and effectively sending these natural grown plants into extinction. In the near future, there never may be another natural born plant. This looks a little bit more dank than the other places. Let me guess. Are we going to talk about... <laughs> yes, the controversy behind putting labels on food to tell the consumers that they are consuming GMOs. Good grief. I mean, what's so wrong with labeling these foods? There's nothing really that dangerous about GMOs. That's absolutely right. There shouldn't be any issue with labeling these foods. However, companies believe that... Adding these labels may result in less sales of that product. I have tasted my own in medicine and it does not taste good. Haha. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, they believe this to be because so many people still perceive GMOs as such a menace to society. I mean, but they aren't, though. I mean, GMOs are actually better for you, from what I've heard. What are these people thinking? Well, they're just misinformed because it's such a complex idea. But GMOs have been around for over 30,000 years, and there's no evidence leading to the fact that they're harmful for the human body. Wait, wait, wait. Go back to 30,000 years? <laughs> wait, did I not talk about that? Well, humans have been altering the genetic makeup for food for millennials. Obviously, people all the way back then don't have all, you know, fancy laboratories that we have today. But they use something called artificial selection, as Charles Darwin once put it, rest his soul. It's the process of choosing organisms with the best or the most desired traits and mating them with the intention of combining and propagating these traits through their offspring. Repeated use of this practice over many generations can result in dramatic genetic changes to the species for the benefit of humans. Do we keep doing that? I sort of enjoy it. I feel like this could be my thing. Alright, that stuff really just sounds like ancient GMO tech to me. It's not exactly what people would consider GMO technology today, but it definitely was a precursor to it. Yeah, in 1973, when Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen discovered a way to cut one gene out of an organism and paste it into another, they discovered the foundations of modern gene editing technologies. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, then in 1995, the first year a pesticide-producing crop was allowed for consumption by the general public after rigorous testing done by the U.S. Environmental and Environmental Protection Agency. Dang, so GMOs have been a thing for quite a while now, and they are rigorous rigorously tested for safety. I mean, in my experience, I've never even seen anyone die from GMOs, you know? Like, I hate to admit it, Seth, but you really changed my mind about GMOs. I mean, like, even with the ethical problems that GMO producers face, like, they, they can do so much good, you know? Exactly. Just because things have cons doesn't mean we should avoid them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I feel like the negative effects of GMOs have really been overplayed to mask the good that GMO foods can do. Hey guys, after all this talk of like GMOs and stuff, do you want to get like a GMO burger? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, man, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. Hey y'all, do y'all know where we can actually get a GMO burger? Is money's just fine. <laughs>